Straight talk. Straight talk, no chaser. No chaser. No chaser. Trip. Samson. What up, though? Juice Man Dan. Peace. And forever love the Cooster. My post was in regard to something that happened in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this morning. So when you got the black people versus the police, you got a majority of America supporting the police against black people. What did George Washington do when he thought he was being suppressed by the British government? He fought back. So is that what you're saying? That's that re mean? Re Wait, refer yeah. to George Washington. I was shot. Yo, what oh. the fuck is this? Tito's bitch. Tito's bitch. Tito's bitch. Tito's bitch. Tito's bitch. I said Tito's bitch. Yo. Tito. How long were you uh, working with BET and Teen Summit? Because that uh, couldn't have been that long because once you got on. Yeah, it's probably about a year, okay. year and a half, something like that. I know I was in high school. Okay. Yeah. So you started, you've been on this early, you've been on this road for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 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 it seemed like time be flying though. You know, you just was in school, you're doing this, and this, it progresses really fast. Where'd you, go, where'd you go to school at? I went to high school at Belusa High School, went to college. Uh, University of Merle Eastern Shore, cool, but there as well. Uh, Eastern Shore? Yeah, I went to grad school at Southeastern University. That's yeah. what's up, man. Hey, did you ever get attacked by seagulls at Eastern Shore? That shit happened to me when I went to their homecoming. Every time I went to the calf, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was a traumatizing experience. I walked out with some pizza, like seven seagulls attacked me. I just oh, threw yeah, the shit yeah. and ran. That, that must was the first week, because they do that all the time. You must just learn. Yeah, you know, I didn't know. I was up there for homecoming, man. Oh, OK. So you a basketball here. homecoming. You here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no football team, huh? So, yeah. So let me ask you a question then. Because you're always moving. How do you keep the energy to keep doing what you're doing? I know that's got to be well, taxing on you Well, sometimes. my man Tashaka Sapp is in the building. Uh -huh. uh, he kind of keeps me uh, grounded and try to keep me eating healthy, which okay. I don't most of the time. Right. But he's a health buff. And uh, I, I get up early, you know. I, I don't I don't drink or smoke, so they help right. me out, be more, uh, have more energy. I try to eat right. I'm doing this thing now called Greens and a Go, so just trying to find better ways. Okay, I don't Green. know. That, that looked like it could be Greens and a Go, but then <laughs> I don't know. That's I am hope. That's Juice Man uh, Dance stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm about to say you gonna throw the drink in from it. Don't <laughs> even plug your drink. Right. <laughs> I didn't have a label on it. It's just me. I'm on a cleanse right now myself. I also believe in eating healthy i'm actually starting a business with that right now okay so i think it's imperative for our people to eat healthy and keep that energy up because if we continue to tear ourselves down yeah and, and continue to feed our bodies poison you can't you on a you on a whiskey cleanse trip I mean, <laughs> whiskey only cleanse hey, look man I'm, I'm just doing me man you know i'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad these brothers decided to, 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 to go that route you know? <laughs> i heard whiskey was good for your gallbladder or something like that look man he just know. do him. He just do him. Hey, look, I just do me, man. You know, but look, I I I'd like to ask you this, man. Um, obviously, you you're a native Washingtonian. Um, what do you think about the shift in uh, native Washingtonianness mm. going on in the city? That was a real slick way of saying gentrification. Right, right. <laughs> or he, make said it, it, he, or, he said it real. Or making up a fucking word, yeah, Washingtonianness. Yeah. Hey, man, did you get it? I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but how you feel about that? I think it's a uh, urgent matter for me because what I don't want to see happen is that uh, five, ten years from now, if that long, I look up and I'm only one here for my family. You know, exactly. my cousins, brothers, and sisters, friends uh, forced out. I was in uh, West Virginia probably about three months ago now. And a lady saw my tags at the gas station. She's like, you from DC? I said, yeah, I'm from DC. And she said, you from South? She said, where you from? I said, Southeast. She saw some Berry Farms. Everybody think that you from Southeast, you live in Berry Farms. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not from Berry Farms. And she was like, she's from DC, but she couldn't afford to live anymore. So she transferred her voucher down there. She said she living comfortable. So I started to figure out how many other people were forced. And I was in law mm -hmm. about a month oh, ago. Law, and the lady, a, law, a lady was telling me she voted for me. I'm like, you voted for me? You live out? She was yeah. like, we have a lot of DC residents in a hotel right here, living out here with our families. It's hard for us to get the, our children to school every morning on time, especially go to different schools. So I'm like, dad, we got people from DC. So it's already happening, it's, man. It's, it's been happening. Laurel, Akakik, uh, what's that? Uh, I have a place like, yeah. Like everybody, Waldorf, Waldorf is big right they talk now. About, they talk about moving people to Frederick as well. Yeah. Frederick, Maryland. But not even just moving people, because myself personally, like I, I make decent money 
and I should be able to. I, I grew up up the street, not too far from here. Yeah. And um, it's a, it's a shame that when I was going to buy my house, I, I couldn't find nothing affordable in the city. The neighborhood I grew up in, the neighborhood that my mother did most of her work in, I couldn't even afford to keep that to stay there. You know what I mean? Like right. I had to go do like most of us do. What, neighbor, what neighborhood is that? I live. I grew up in Ward Four. I okay. grew up around off of Petworth Ferris Street, Ward Petworth, Ward, the Petworth area. Okay. Um, but I couldn't find nothing over there. Same, was, with, same with me, man. Same yeah, with so me. I, I, I did like most of us do and bought a house in PG. You know what I mean? Do I want to be in the city? Of course I want to be in the city. I love the city. But it was more feasible and more uh, affordable for me to move out the city. But, but I'll say this. I, I think one thing, um, <clears throat> and Mike, you know, if we can get that music going. I think if one thing we have to uh, at least tell... The people who actually own their property now, stop selling your property to these, uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? These companies that call you, your house worth four hundred thousand, and you sell it for eighty thousand. Yo, that we had a, a, a situation know? in my family almost split the family apart of letting property go. I'm from War Four, and couldn't get on the same page to keep a house in Washington D.C. And that's that shit is like worth its weight in gold at this point. Yeah, so that that is great advice to anybody out there. And watch out for your elderly relatives, man, because they're getting called for reverse mortgages, predatory lending. Yep. That's important, man. That happened to my grandmother, man. So you gotta look out for your auntie and uncle when they're getting up there in age. If they own property in the district, man, look out for them. So part of what we want to do is, from a council member, is create new policy around displacement free zones. Because as the property, even if you own the house, the property value grows so much, the taxes grow so much, and people like your grandmother on a fixed income, so they can't afford to keep up with the payments. And even though it's paid off or close to being paid off, they still get forced out, man. So we're trying to figure out creative ways to keep our people here and incentivize them for staying here, especially our seniors. Can you, could you speak to that law that they have, right? They're supposed to have, you know, uh, 10% affordable housing for every 50 units. I, I personally don't think they're doing enough. What do you think about that initiative? So um, the, the, the mayor created this. It's been several mayors. It's called the Housing Production Trust Fund. They put money in to ensure that anything new gets built, a certain percentage has got to be uh, uh, allocated for affordable housing. But the word affordable is used too loosely because oh, yeah. a million dollar house is affordable to somebody. Yeah. And so it's based on AMI, area medium uh, income. And right now, the area medium income right now is $112,000 a year on average, you know, median. And so we got to redefine with these words because words have a lot of meaning. Yeah, so do. as a council member, my job well. is to make sure we go back and look at how we front, um get people qualified to move in because so many people getting forced out you take in a whole neighborhood and you build 10 units but out of 48 units then you know that's only a little bit of people coming back man and then another issue is that you got you got big families especially in, in war they be at five six bedrooms in public housing right. but you only build them again for two and three so that population that has these large families get forced out automatically even though they say they have the right to return right I, I, i'll say this though and not to play devil's advocate, but only just to try and shed a little more light on some of the issues in our community. Um, I'm one of the I'm, I'm one of the people. I think that like eventually, and I and I'm speaking from like I'm, I'm talking about African Americans right. and and other minorities, Latinos or whatever. I think that um, I think that the um, Public assistance program. <laughs> yeah, I do that. <laughs> hey, 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 we we need to I, I think we need to start building um, the part in our community that who actually own their stuff because I mm -hmm. think that's where we fall at a disadvantage a lot um, when it comes to other groups coming in setting up shop and taking taking over different neighborhoods. So one of the newest concepts that we're, we're having discussions about is community land trust. Okay, and it ensures that you can pass on generational wealth through properties. So DC complains about a lot of the homelessness in the, in the community, mm -hmm. a lot of blighted, about a lot of blighted, blighted properties. But the reality is we own a lot of the uh, properties that's vacant in the community. Of course. Yeah, and so, exactly. you know, uh, it's, it's, it's hypocrisy almost. And so I met with DHCD to ensure we put most of them 
properties back online and get them back into the market. And even Mayor Bowser took a big step uh, yesterday and announced she's gonna be putting them back on the market for two hundred and fifty dollars for police officers, fire fighters, what? and hey, teachers. I'm in too. Hold up, and I'm so in that me. just happened. Yo. I need yeah. 10 of them right now. Yeah, no, they just happened yesterday. <laughs> we about to buy the block and so, buy back the block. So she's doing that. And hopes that you can block. put the money into fixing it up, making it livable, but basically giving away. Mary yeah. Bray used to do that a, lot, a long time ago for a dollar property just to get the community back for them. Just tax dollars coming in. And we got to talk about that because that's the basis of gentrification. You know, you push that's out shit. the people, you push out the people and bring in, people, bring in the middle class mm-hmm. and it forces the lower class out. But at this point, the middle class is actually the lower class. Yeah. Because I am in one of the fields you just mentioned so you know it makes sense that i should live in the city that i protect you know what i mean and if i'm in the city it's, it's it benefits myself it benefits my family and it benefits the city as well right. we don't need to bring in somebody that don't look like us to to build our communities up we, we have plenty of us in this room right now that could rebuild our communities but I, that's why the housing portion is so effective right that, that was, can, was, can, was, can you get out there and really making a community look for a job if you don't have stable housing you're going to take care of your first needs first that's your need for food and shelter if your food and shelter not taken care of how can you have a suit to go for a job interview how can you get stable enough to look for programs so i think the housing component like i gotta play devil's advocate to you on that one that housing component is 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 super important because it is the stability. If nobody has stability, all the other things kind of play off of Let that. me tell you something that crushed me, man, about a few weeks ago. I do a program inside the senior homes. We're getting started called Seniors for Seniors. So we try to take high school seniors and meet with seniors in our community. Uh, so we're getting that launch. And one lady, came, one lady came to me. She showed me her cell phone. It was like a picture of a bed, a lamp, and a dresser. I'm trying to figure out why she's showing it to me. She was saying that she's living in a storage bin. This lady was well over 60 years old, wow. living in a storage bin. So I'm thinking, hey, where's she taking a shower? Where's she brushing her teeth? And that's all she can afford to live in a storage bin, and man. That's, that's, and that's, that's crazy. And you talk about somebody that's 60 years old. You talk about somebody that lived through civil rights. You talk about somebody that lived through some real stuff that we hadn't didn't have to go through. And to go through all that and to be in the storage bin, that's a shame. Yeah. But, but, but this is the major question here. To you and to you. Um, <laughs> Who are we going to to try to fix these problems? No, I'm well, I think I think electing uh, folks like Treyon who care about the community because yeah. these yeah. these these problems are were socially engineered, so it takes reverse engineering to fix it. Yeah, like exactly. housing redlining, moving jobs out of the community. These were po- things were created by policy, exactly. so policy has to fix those things. Yeah. So so and, and as long as people just look at it as a problem of oh maybe it's laziness or a problem of maybe I, I it's no no I'm, I'm i'm not saying you say that but that's a comment like oh these people don't can't pull themselves up by their bootstraps these people it the focus on the people instead of the policy that the put the people in that position I, I think what i'm also saying is that we can champion for all the programs in the world that we need. And that, that $250, yeah, that shit was good shit. But, <laughs> See, he won that, he won that program. Right, look, I got the money. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like five joints right like now. Like 10 of joints. Clean up my little, my little ass bank account. Um, nah, but no, nah, all jokes aside. My thing is, I think it's, I think it's time to change the mentality. Um, but I, I Especially, in, oh, hold up. I think it's time to change the mentality in our community. Because number one recording studio. we don't we don't even a lot of us don't even fathom ownership. But I think that's you know what, what I'm saying. That's not even that's not something that we even fathom. But look, a lot of us hold up, man. Let me let, let me finish. <laughs> that's the pause, bill. <laughs> look, so a lot of us don't even fathom home on home on home ownership, which I think is 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 one of the bigger problems because eventually. Like, if you if you're in some place that you're renting, one day it could get sold. One day they might tear it down. A bigger development might climb. Anything could happen. I ask you this: um, Are there any programs, or do you think there should be any programs that try to steer more of our residents into ownership as opposed to uh, leasing with with vouchers? I think it has to be both. I think that one thing that we do. As an African American community, those who us who kind of make it, is we forget that somebody gave us a helping hand to make Def- it. Definitely. And if you look at the DC government, we give out 
man, billions of dollars in contracts, do this and that. But we don't see that because it's not publicized, not public information. Well, it's public information. A lot of us don't look at it. But we're subsidizing a lot of things, especially millionaires and billionaires in the city taking advantage of these contracts, yes, these yes, tax incentives. Yes. You know, so we're going to talk about that. We got to talk about it in a holistic approach. Hell yeah. And not just hand, not just handouts, but giving somebody a hand up and a bridge to cross over. Because we can barely get business loans mm. to do what we need to do for small that, minority businesses. And, 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 and you know what? We got I, a double I, A I, credit rating in the city. I agree with you right there because... Um, cause and I, and I wasn't saying what I was saying to try to demean anybody that's on vouchers. What I'm saying is like, for instance, when Fifty was in was in charge, right? You know the what is now the Walmart and the new condo up yeah. on South Dakota and um, right. New Hampshire, uh, South Dakota and Riggs. There's a Walmart, know that shit, in a, in a big condo, and they build all these condos there. Yo, from what I hear, the lot was sold for ten fucking dollars. Yeah, and they sold to these developers. Ten dollars. They sold. So, so my thing is ten dollars. Because we they, have one in our community just was sold a big K liquor for one dollar. Exactly. Yeah, and, and that's what happened. So, but 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 but, who, but who, who did they sell it to? Exactly. So so do you guys have anything? In, it uh, was some palms being greased to you, get that one dollar lot and ten dollar lot. Are you working on some things to get like minority grants, minority businesses, small business loans? Because you know what, I, I I don't like that word minority. Okay, because well, I think well, that let's, 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 let's be Are you honest. working on light skin grants and light skin nah. business? <laughs> let's talk about, let's be beige, real. You're right. Beige, this is, you're beige right. Uh, business no, 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 ownership. No, 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 this, is, this, is, this is straight talk, this is straight no, talk, talk no chase. And, so, yeah. and one of the biggest problems we have is, see, because my wife deals with um, small business administration for the federal government where, you know, they in that field. And a lot of things, Minority. you could be a, a gay white man, yeah. a, a, a white woman, a veteran, all of these different things constitute you as a minority. Well, let's say and, black. And all, and all of those things kick out African Americans. So, I would say specifically, you know, Dan, I would just like you to use the word African American. Okay, Where I will use for, for for you. I will use the word African American. I will use the word Moabite. I will use the word more. I will go. use just the ask word. The question. <laughs> yes, black African American brothers and sisters. Do you guys are working on, or are you guys working on anything to get and, and grants I know. and business loans for us? So politically, the you answer can't that, just say so that is no right. at the moment. But mm -hmm. I do know we are working. I met with Deputy Mayor Courtney Snowden a few days ago. We we're probably a week ago now. They do have a new program called Project Five Hundred, mm -hmm. and it's geared towards small minority businesses in D in DC. Um, pretty much trying to target businesses east of the river um, to ensure that they can participate in the business process by getting loans. Mm -hmm. Uh, helping with their bonds if they in the construction industry so trying to supplement where their week are where they're weak at and that's been a conversation that we're trying to do to, to get people to stand on their feet right. to create our own economic empowerment because no solution doubt. lies within us yeah. and, and the more we do that the more we because we gonna we can hire our own that we don't have to worry about nobody else hiring us exactly. because we're empowered to hire each other Man, and hire our own. And, and you know that's that's the only point i was trying to make i, I you know i didn't want to come across like i was you know, put Scrooge around. McDuck over there, nah, but I'm just swimming saying, in his coins. I'm just saying, other other ethnicities have the leg up. Yeah, but, man, you got to think about we we they got a lot of incentives as well. You look at the Jewish community; they got a lot of incentives. You know, you look at the uh, the Korean communities in, in yeah. DC; they get a lot of incentives. The Arab we, community, everybody. And you not know. to take nothing away with them. No, I, I don't. I don't even fault them because they they get busy. You know what I'm saying? They not, you know, so. But they got a leg up also. Yeah. They come over they here. The whole they, they, get, they get a whole lot of grants. They get a whole lot of incentives to come over here and start their stuff. They do. We're starting behind. It's like it's like I ran track, right? So if you run a hundred yard dash, and they start at the fifty meter point, and you starting back here at the starting line, you're not going to catch me. Yeah. Even though we got them extra muscles, even though we're stronger than most of them. But you know, the whole time we could catch them though. Yeah, we can if we run. If we you know how you catch them, how you catch them? Go to Horse and Dickies instead of if you go eat some greasy ass food. Go oh. to Horse and Dickies. Yeah. Don't go to the Chinese carry. -out. Shout out to Horse and Dickies, Georgia <laughs> Avenue <laughs> and uh, H Street. Yeah. Those are my peoples, man. It, it, Tacoma. It's it, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's different things you can do to mm -hmm. slow others down and pick your own up. Right. You, you know, right. If, if Horse and Dickies had ten restaurants in D.C., think about how many people could have jobs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And not have to worry about coming to work and being uh, uh, racially, you know, 
discriminated against. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about cutting your dreads. You know what I'm saying? Because I had to cut my dreads and it didn't make a difference. I'm still the same guy. Man, your wife made you cut your dreads. <laughs> Stop playing games. <laughs> no, she didn't. Just don't blame she that on the game. system. She liked them. Especially when I came up the shop and did that. <laughs> <laughs> firearm and power we got in our community with these guns is ridiculous man and we can't get quality education in the district so what we decided to do in our community was empower young brothers like yourself to start getting more involved